Okay. So before I introduce our special guest, I would um, like to give a little context and a few uh, words of gratitude, as I normally do. Uh, we started this series of conferences in 2008 with our friend Bob Schrum, um, who at the time was teaching at NYU's Wagner School of Public Service. <clears throat> and as always, I'd like to recognize and thank Bob um, for his insight and his inspiration. Very soon after the 2008 conference, Steve McMahon joined us, and when Bob left NYU, Steve took over uh, as the sort of coordinator of talent and designer of the programs. Um, so we thank you also for your commitment to the series and your seemingly bottomless supply of quality speakers to come <laughs> and keep filling in where necessary. To Lynn, who uh, has been a friend and colleague for many years, thank you for your sponsorship, your leadership of the program, and of course to Steve, somewhere in the room, and Tom, there you are, um, who managed the not inconsiderable details of getting this mounted. So. Now I have the great honor of introducing our morning speaker, <laughs> the Honorable Costos Bakulianis, the mayor of this beautiful city um, that has hosted us for two years. This is our second time being here. The mayor comes from a very distinguished political family. Both his parents were in public service. Um, his uncle is the current Greek prime minister, and his maternal grandfather was the former prime minister kind of the Kennedy family. Um, <laughs> Mayor was elected in June of, two, uh, of 2019, um, beginning his service in September of that year. Prior to that, he had served as the governor of uh, Central Greece from 2014 to 2019, and the mayor of Karpnisi from 2011 to 14. He was born in Athens, graduated from the Millerfield School in the UK and in 1986 before going to Brown, where he studied history and international relations. He continued his postgraduate studies in public policy with a specialization in microeconomics um, at Harvard's Kennedy School of Government. He holds a PhD from political science and international relations from the University of Oxford overachiever. <laughs> both, both from the vantage point of his political experience and his academic credentials, he's perfectly situated to offer comments to us this morning. The mayor shepherded his city through COVID and its aftermath, always a champion of a sustainable green city. In March of 2021, the mayor outlined his three explicit post-COVID strategic goals. Uh, one, to reclaim or liberate quality public space. Two, to adopt a new model of sustainable mobility. And three, to make sure that we change, quote, without losing our soul, a tall task. <laughs> Athens, like many European cities in the last 10 years, has grappled with large and persistent migration influxes, prolonged economic crisis, and a global pandemic. And like the US and elsewhere in Europe, in the political sphere, topics such as uh, populism, illiberalism, and challenges to democracy have resulted in the election of some populist political leaders. The mayor has suggested, however, that Greece is in a post-populism era, and his country's trajectory might provide an example to countries currently undergoing populist and authoritarian convulsions. So we thank you for joining us and we look forward to your insight. Well, welcome to Athens. It's a pleasure to have you here and it is a privilege. It sure feels like democracy is visiting its birthplace. So I'm sure all of you appreciate by now that um, American politics has become world politics, right? I mean, we are all uh, becoming experts in vote counting in counties in Nevada. Uh, 
and you know what's happening in Ohio and the difference between uh, urban centers and rural areas. I mean, it's scary. But uh, this is my uh, way of trying to make my very first point: that it sure does feel that there is a huge gap, a huge distance between the United States and Greece. I mean, the United States being the United States, the world's superpower, um, and Greece. Um, may claim some superpowers, but that's when it comes to culture and to nothing else. So, and yet, there is so much that brings us together. And one of these, I think the most important one, is that we are united in the defense of democracy. Now, democracy, of course, um, begins with the, to go back to the ancient Greeks, with the thesis and the antithesis and then the synthesis which means, um, in another way, that democracy is actually based on dialogue. And that even involves a rough and tumble of politics. That may even involve uh, hard uh, debate. That may even involve partisanship. However, democracy does entail one very simple and very clear premise, that we all have to live together at the end. And that one's um, opponent isn't one's enemy. Now, these are not theoretical conclusions. Uh, you kindly mentioned the Greek experience a bit earlier. Let me take you back, back in time, to 2012 and 2013. I don't know how many of you are actually familiar with the history of the Greek financial and economic crisis. Um, suffice it to say that we're talking about the deepest and most prolonged economic and financial crisis in the history of modern economics, of recorded modern economics in peacetime. There were times when Athens resembled the Weimar Republic. I, I will never forget, I, I was invited, a classmate of mine from Harvard was getting married in, in North Carolina. Uh, I love him. He's a wonderful Republican friend of mine. And I went to his wedding, and the first question I got from everyone there is, are you guys all right? Are you safe? Is your family secure? Why? Because the world public opinion was constantly fed with images of violence on the streets, and justifiably, and you know, very humanely. They were worried about us. I mean, this is what Greece had become. And yet, and yet, in a short period of time, we were able to bounce back. And we were able to bounce forward, having isolated populists with our democracy stronger than ever, and our institutions better embedded than ever. We had a neo-Nazi party. It was called the Golden Dawn. It was born in an Athenian neighborhood and he died in an Athenian courthouse. There were moments where we literally struggled with our European identity. You know, being a member of the European Union is tremendously important to us. It's not just about economics. It's not just about trade. It is about our very identity, our DNA. And yet, there was a time when we literally came within a few hours of leaving um, the European Union. It was our own version of the Brexit. It was called Grexit <laughs> back then, not very imaginatively. So in many ways, we were actually the, the canary in the coal mine for what followed. You know, I remember a year later, I found myself with some British friends. And I was like, guys, thank you. You're making us feel so much better. We're not alone anymore. <laughs> And then I found myself with some American friends, and I was very appreciative as well. It's like, <laughs> great, you guys. Uh, but joking aside, this is how we did this. We did this by going back to the roots. Populism poses the wrong answers, but it does pose the right questions. Never underestimate it. It is a force to be reckoned with because it does put significant issues on the table. And it's easy 
to dismiss it, you know, as democratic backsliding, and it's easy to frown, frown down. But in real life, it is about working bottom up. It's about working uh, on the grassroots. As uh, I'm told it's said in the US. And it is about owing to our constituency our better selves. Now, this is not very easy. Or to be more exact, it's much easier to say it than actually do it. Because many of us, especially at the time of social media, we find ourselves entrapped in our own echo chambers. But it does start with a working assumption, an inner working assumption, that one has to feel uncomfortable. If you don't feel uncomfortable, you're never going to win an election. Because if you don't feel uncomfortable, that means that you're not challenged. And if you're not challenging yourself, you cannot ch challenge others. So there's never going to be a positive outcome. So number one is the lesson about populism. Number two for us is the lesson about polarization. There has to come a time when we all have to step, take a step back. It is very easy. Uh, you know, it's even uh, at times there's a siren that is heard that attracts one to go on TV in the morning and say something more than one has to. But there is so a lot of value to actually to self-constraints. And there is also a lot of value to collective constraint within our political parties. I mean, we were very fortunate um, in Greece that in 2016, uh, we elected as the head of our party the complete outsider. He was a maverick. If you asked anyone about him back in 2014, they'd be like, there's no way he would ever be elected president. And yet he did. And he brought a new mentality and a new way of thinking to the party. And the third conclusion is institutions, institutions, institutions. It is boring. It is gray. It doesn't make for great storytelling. And yet, institutions are what we're all in for. And institutions are what keep us together and what unites us at difficult, in difficult situations. Now, I fully understand that talking about populism, talking about the need to, to overcome uh, polarization, and talking about institutions isn't the most attractive proposition. And it's not the most attractive uh, proposition because very often it is wrongly, but it is associated with elite thinking. That's why it needs to be connected with the real life concerns, be that uh, the economy, be that gender rights, be that our struggle in Athens for a fair um, and inclusive, a green and a just city. Politics is, after all, about connecting the global with the local and the local with the global. And this is, I think, the challenge that we all had a, have ahead of us in the years to come, whether it is Athens, whether it's Washington, D.C., whether it is London, or whether it is New Delhi. So once again, I do hope you will enjoy your time in our fair city. We have done our best to arrange the weather for you. Um, I do hope you have you have some free time to enjoy Athens by night as well. I, I think we all need energy for the years to come. Thank you so much, and it's great seeing you.